So we're talking about the first derivative test today, that's 5.2, and that's on pages 221 to 237 in your text. And our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of curve sketching by applying differentiation and limits. And our lesson objectives today, number one, to understand how the first derivative of a function can help us find maximum and minimum values of the function. And number two, to be able to use the first derivative test to find intervals where a function is increasing and decreasing. So far we've learned that derivative of a function is the equation that describes its slope at a general point. And when we are sketching functions, one of the main points that we need to find are the maximum values and the minimum values. So graphically they would look like this. So if I had a graph of a function that looks something like this, I can see on this function that there is a maximum value right here and there happens to be a minimum value right there. So these max and min values can be classified as relative max or mins. So these two would be relative max or mins because the function itself does go higher than this, uh, this point right here, just not at that point, or absolute max or min. So neither one of these would be an absolute max or min. Um, an absolute max or min might be like something like a parabola where you have a minimum here and it is the lowest point of the whole graph. And that would be called an absolute max or min. And these are also sometimes just called critical values. So we can use derivatives to find the location of these critical values because at these locations, the slope of the tangent line, which we call the derivative, is gonna be equal to zero. So again, I'll just draw a quick sketch of what I had on there before, something like that. Well, if you look at the slope of the tangent line right here, and we talked about this in physics 30, the slope of that line is zero. So that means if I know that the slope of the tangent line is something called the derivative, which we now know that, we know that that's gonna be equal to zero at that point, and it's gonna be equal to zero at that point. So we're gonna use that information now to answer this example. It says find the location of any maximum or minimum values for the function y equals two x cubed minus 24 x plus 21. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first derivative of this thing, so y prime, that equals six x squared minus 24. And what we're gonna do with that is we are going to um, set it equal to zero because this is the derivative, which is the slope. So if we make that thing equal to zero, now we have an equation that we can solve. We can divide everything by six, so we get zero equaling x squared minus four, and we can factor that, x minus two and x plus two. So that means we now have our two x values at which the, um, the function here, two x cubed minus 24 x plus 21 has a maximum or a minimum value. So we have an x value of two, and we have an x value of negative two. Now the problem is we also need y values for these things. So in order to get the y values, we need to plug the x values into the original function. We don't plug it into the derivative because if we plug it into the derivative, we're gonna get zero. So we're gonna plug it into the original function. So in the first case, we get y equals two times two cubed minus 24 times two plus 21. And with that, we get uh, two times uh, two to the fourth power, which is 16 minus 48 plus 21. So 16 plus 21 is 37 minus 48 gives us a y value of negative 11. So this point here is 2 comma negative 11. That would be either a maximum or a minimum. And when we do the same thing with negative 2, we get 2 times negative 2 cubed minus 24 times negative 2 plus 21. We get uh, negative 16 here now we get positive 48, and we get positive 21. Uh, negative 16 plus 21 is positive five, plus 48, that's 53. So those are our two points. They're maximum and minimum values. One of them's at two comma negative 11, and the other one's at negative two comma 53. But as of right now, we don't know what's gonna be a maximum or minimum, and that's when we get into what we call the first derivative test. So the first derivative test tells us where a function is gonna be increasing and or decreasing. So I'm gonna draw another little function here. So we just found out that the slope is zero at this point here, which is a maximum, and this point here, which is a minimum. Now we're gonna take a look at where the function is increasing. So it's increasing on the left-hand side of this first point. And if you draw any sort of tangent line, the slope there is gonna be positive. It's a positive slope. And since the tangent line is a derivative, so if y prime happens to be positive, then we know that this function is increasing. Any tangent line that you draw, y positive means that it's increasing. Oh, well, sorry, if y prime is positive, it's increasing. If we look at where it's decreasing in this part right here, any tangent line we draw there has a negative slope. So if y prime is negative, that means your function is gonna be decreasing. 
So we can use this concept when we just have the equation of a function to actually find out where that function is increasing and where it's decreasing. So in order to use the first derivative test, we need to know the location of any maximums or minimums, and we just found out how to do that in the last slide. And then we can use a sign analysis, which is key, to find the intervals that that function is going to be increasing, and that's where it's going to be positive, and or decreasing, and that's where it's going to be negative. So for the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1, find your critical values and determine if they are maximums or minimums. Then we're going to draw a rough sketch of the graph. Um, so what we're going to do is find f prime x, which is the first derivative. That's 3x squared minus 3. And then we're going to set that thing equal to 0, because that'll tell us the location of maximums or minimums. So I can divide everything in this case by 3. So I get 0 equaling x squared minus 1. When I factor that, I get x minus 1 and x plus 1. So I know my x values for these points, positive 1 and negative 1. If I plug a positive 1 into the original function, I get 1 minus 3 plus 1. So 1 minus 3 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. If I plug a negative 1 into this equation, I get negative 1 plus 3 plus 1. And that gives me uh, 3. So I know the location of these points. Now I need to be able to find out if they're maximums or minimums. So we're, we do a sign analysis. Now we do a sign analysis with the first derivative. So I'm just going to write in here f prime x. Now we use the two x values from our sign analysis, negative 1 and positive 1. And when we do a sign analysis, we just pick a point that's anywhere in these intervals and plug it into our function. But you have to remember, it's why I write this in, I have to plug it into the f prime function. Because I'm looking at where the slope is going to be positive and when the slope is going to be negative. So I take uh, like a 0, anywhere in between there, I'll take a 0, I plug it into the original function, or not the original function, the first derivative, uh, 0 minus 1 is negative. It's negative 1, so that means anything in here is going to be negative. We know these two things are 0, because that's max and mins. If I plug in a positive 2, I get 4 minus 1, which is a positive 3. And if I plug in uh, negative 2, I squared, it still becomes positive in the end. So all this means is that the function is going to be increasing from negative infinity to negative 1. And that's not including negative 1, because that's where it's equal to 0. And the other place is going to be uh, from 1 to infinity. And it happens to be decreasing from negative 1 to 1. So it says to draw a rough sketch. We're going to do that. We will plot some points. The points we're going to plot are 1, comma, negative 1. So 1, comma, negative 1 is down here. And negative 1, oops, sorry, 1, comma, negative 1 is down here. And negative 1, comma, 3 is up here somewhere. So when we sketch this graph, we know it needs to be increasing from negative infinity to negative 1. So that's coming increasing like that. It's going to be decreasing from negative 1 to 1. So it comes down here. And then it's going to be increasing again from 1 to infinity. So this is just the way that the first derivative helps us um, sketch functions. It's a little bit different than we've done it before, but it can actually be quite handy. So in summary, by using the first derivative, we can find out two very important characteristics of the graph of a function, the locations of maximums or minimums, and the intervals in which the function is increasing and decreasing. And we're going to be using this a lot whenever we're sketching functions. So your assignment is on pages 235 to 237. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.